This is the ant engine at 0.5 kilonewtons of thrust at sea level. You might say it's pretty small. And this is Potato, the smallest moon in Kerbal Space Program 2, and one of the easiest celestial bodies to land on. So my question is, can you land on Git Potato using nothing but the ant, the smallest engine in the game? <laughs> In trying to keep a weekly schedule, I had four video ideas I wanted to try and tackle in the hopes that one of them would work. By Thursday night, and still nothing recorded, I was in a slight panic. The micro shuttle I was working on tore itself apart no matter what. The Juno colony I've been live streaming was falling apart in the vehicle assembly building. And my dreams of a grand tour, well, that'd take too long and is something I'll keep working on for a future release. So while at work last night, thinking of an interesting idea for today's video, it hit me. The micro shuttle didn't work, but what if I could go even smaller? What if I could get somewhere with the smallest engine in the game? What if I could go to the smallest body with the smallest engine in the game? And nothing but that. Well, the answer to the question, can you land on potato using nothing but the ant, is no. At least not for now. Not on my current hardware. I didn't record my attempts at this because it never got past the testing phase. But when trying to launch, I was getting a frame near enough every five seconds. Having over 400 engines on the first stage will do that. It was pure pain. But I went back to the vehicle assembly building, now fully panicking that I'd have nothing to release today, when I found the spider, the ant's radially attached cousin. Near enough identical in looks, well, the engine nozzle is, but with over four times the amount of thrust at sea level. Now we're talking. Funnily enough, the spider is actually far worse than the ant once you're in space. The specific impulse of the engine is 40 seconds lower, and they provide the same amount of thrust. So if I wanted to make this the most efficient design possible, what on earth am I talking about? I'd have spider engines for the initial ascent and switch to the ant some way through the launch. But I'm not going for efficiency here. This is a challenge and is supposed to make me want to hate myself. So it has to be one engine the entire way. Well, as I've been talking about the challenge I want to attempt here, I've been slowly building up the rocket on screen and now we're at the fun part, trying to figure out how on earth I'm going to get any sort of thrust off the pad using these tiny radial engines. The answer, lots of them. In the end, I had to go with 96 spiders on the first stage. Now, Kerbal Space Program 2 has improved a lot since the first patch, but it still suffers from the age-old problem. The more engines you have, the slower the game will run. So 96 firing up at once? Yeah, it's not going to be pretty. Although a damn sight better than over 400 ants. Imagine, 400 ants, that's almost a nest. Well, actually, that probably falls far short of a nest. Look, I'm not an entomologist, okay? I just try doing silly things like this in Funny Space Game 2. No, not simple Juno 2, although I am planning on starting some videos on that game very shortly. I did want the first video out tomorrow, but as mentioned before, having all my Kerbal ideas fail this week, I didn't exactly have time to start that. But if you do want to see some Juno New Origins on this channel, please let me know in the comments because I need to make sure that it's actually well received before starting it, so let me know. Anyway, whilst I was going wildly off topic talking about ants and do you know new origins? Where on earth did my brain go there? I did showcase the assembly statistics. Even though the rocket that is currently flying only weighed 22.56 tons on launch, it has 154 parts and 114 of those are the engines. Yes, this launch footage, yes, this launch footage is actually sped up 18 times because this launch took me about half an hour in real time. Now I gotta say I'm not actually flying this. One of the mods that I've picked up that I've covered in my previous modding videos is a mod called Control System. And basically it acts like Kerbal Operating System from KSP1, where you can write scripts and you can do all kinds of fancy coding shenanigans in order to control your rockets for you. Now I didn't write the script that I'm using, that comes packaged with the mod, but it's essentially MechJeb Ascent guidance from the first game, although maybe not quite as accurate as that was. But because it's like Kerbal Operating System, well you can definitely go in and write a better script than what is packaged with the mod. There is a link to that mod in the description of this video if you want to go check it out and I would definitely recommend picking it up if you're attempting to do things like this. Now the first stage has been completely used up but let me tell you even though there are only 96 engines on there, only 96? What? Well I was getting about two frames per second for the launch, maybe even less. I didn't have a frame counter up so I didn't know but attempting to fly something at those frames is just ludicrous. You won't do it, you'll end up spinning out, something will go wrong, you'll probably end up hitting your neighbor or Barbara or a 
cat stuck in a tree. The VAB looks like a tech. Who knows? It's pretty much impossible to fly. And I know the game's in early access, so hopefully we see some further optimizations that makes flying missions like this a little nicer down the line. Well, at least you'd like to hope so. I mean, the first patch did do really, really well for the game, so I'm hoping the same happens later on. Anyway, this is where I decided, actually, you know what? I'm not going to use control system the entire way up. I have ditched the first stage now, and I'm getting somewhat acceptable frames to start flying this. So I turned it off because that mod, even though it is wonderful, you don't get the most accurate of orbits. But we have made it to space, although we aren't quite in an orbit yet. No, I am going to have to perform a little bit of an additional burn to place us into our final orbit, which should be starting any minute. There we go. And once this burn is complete, which shouldn't take too long, I have managed to get to orbits only using the spiders. Quite an achievement considering I am deeply arachnophobic. I hate spiders. I really can't deal with them. They, they scare the living daylights out of me. To the point where if I see a spider running across the room and I can't find out where it's gone, if that's say my bedroom, I will not sleep in there that night. No, I'm that terrified. It really, they really, really bother me. And I know they're useful and they kill flies and they do all of that, but no, they but the, the, just the thought of them, it, it scares me. It scares me immensely. Well, once again, I seem to have completely gone off topic there, but what we are doing now is actually plotting my way over to Eve. And you can see I do have some sort of encounter, although it is going to be quite far away from the surface of that purple monster. So I will have to perform some kind of correction burn whilst I am in deep interplanetary space to get as close as I would like to that planet. But we have started the burn now, and well, just like that, we have also finished the burn. I used Use the maneuver burn, the, the maneuver executor from Kerbal Control System or just Control System there to perform that. Just to showcase that, yes, you can also use that mod to perform burns. Still not quite accurate, let's skip ahead. Yes, I didn't really want to show you the entire process of me plotting out a little bit of a correction burn to Eve because it took me a really long time, even using Maneuver Node Controller. Yeah, it was being a little bit finicky, the purple monster, but I did finally manage to get myself a nice close encounter. And now it's just a quick time warp over to Eve, and I really love the new fast time warp options in Kerbal Space Program 2 because they are much, much, much faster than they were in the first game. So I didn't have to wait around for ages to get to Eve, and yeah, here we go. Suddenly Eve, and this was probably not the best of shots because you can't actually see the spacecraft. I imagine it's even worse on YouTube due to the YouTube compression, but here we go. We are going to fire up the engines and try and capture ourselves into a highly elliptical orbit because when I did this transfer over to Eve, I was a bit silly and I missed my transfer window. So my trajectory from Kerbin was very bad. It, it was so bad that I had to to spend far more fuel than I would have liked once I got to Eve to actually capture even into this highly elliptical orbit. And that means I barely have any fuel left. So what I am doing right now is figuring, trying to find a way to get to Gilly where I can actually slow down with the remaining fuel that I do have. Although you may notice that I only have 52 meters per second of delta V left, and it's gonna take me much more than that to slow down, which means I'm not going to be landing on Gilly today with this spacecraft, or am I? I have a little bit of a plan up my sleeve. I'm going to use a tiny, tiny little burn. It's gonna be 22 meters per second, and it will put me on a direct impact course with the potato, yes. And what I am going to do is try and use up the remainder of the fuel on this tiny spacecraft and then get, I think it's Bill Kerman out and use his EVA propellant pack to actually land. Yes, it's Bill. We are going to be stranding Bill on the surface of Gilly because there's no way I'm getting back. I did put a parachute on top of this in the hopes that I might even be able to possibly return to Kerbin. That's clearly not going to happen. Maybe I need to go back and redesign this entire spacecraft. And so it has enough fuel to get back from the surface of Gilly as well. That is the next part of this challenge, but I've not done that in today's video. No, we are just going for the landing today because it's stranded the spacecraft. Bill is stranded. I certainly hope he's brought enough snacks along in his spacesuit to keep him there for a very long time because obviously we need to wait for a transfer window to get back to Eve and we need to design a rescue mission. It's going to take quite a while before Bill Kerman returns safely to Kerbal but he is in the final stages of his flight now and I found a little bit of a hill to plop him nice and firmly down upon. Of course it's not just that he's dancing in time to the music I swear there but we do need 
need to place a flag. We were able to get to Gilly, kind of, only using spiders. Ants would have been better, but not with my current hardware, although maybe soon. A big thanks to Levi Stauffer, Mr. Blue Star, Pentium, So Not The Hero Type, Sunset Awesome, That Unreal Guy, Zaretia, and the rest of my patrons and members for their continued support. I've been Karnassa, like and subscribe for more, and I will see you later.